Uh, I want to read from the scriptures today and think, continue a message we had from last week. And uh, just start, starting from there in uh, John chapter 16, it says, I tell you the truth, Yeshua said, it's for your advantage that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the parakletos, the menachem, uh, it's hard to translate this. It's the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the teacher, the advocate. He will not come to you. However, if I do go, I will send him to you. And when it comes, he will accuse. He will accuse of sin and of righteousness, static, and that of judgment, and that of mishpat. He says, I have many more things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. However, the Ruach HaMet, the spirit of truth, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. And we ask, Abba, that you would let our hearts be open today, that we'd be able to receive your truth today and walk in your truth, B'Shem Yeshua. As I said, today's message is part two of the Ruach as our tribulation helper and comforter, building on what we had done last week. So I encourage you to also listen to last week's message. John chapter 16 verses 7 to 15 is Yeshua's actually fourth message on the work of the Ruach as our parakletos. Again, hard to translate that word into English. There's no one word that it encompasses. And Yeshua said to, these words, though, to bring comfort to his Talmudim at their last Passover meal, the last Pesach meal, the last supper, and dealing also with the uh, last three messages last week. The first three messages that we dealt with last week is the Ruach's uh, ministries focused on empowering his Talmudim to face the persecution and tribulation that he knew was coming because Yeshua knew he was soon going to be arrested. He was going to be tried. He was going to be crucified. And after his resurrection, he'd be returning quickly to re sit at the right hand of Abba Elohim. And he knew that persecution and tribulation were going to come to his Talmudim, his disciples, and to many followers for the last 2,000 years have faced this as well, just as he warned in Matthew chapter 24, and we find this taking place in so many places of the world today. That's why Yeshua said in John chapter 14, verse 18, also speaking about the presence and the work of the Ruach, that he will not abandon us and leave us as orphans. The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, was sent to them and to us to help us through our crazy world. We just need to remain plugged into the Lord in these days. As John 14, 17 says, the Ruach will be both with you encompassing us and be in us from the inside. The Ruach is our God hug on the inside, our comforter, our helper, our teacher, our guider. And if you think this world's crazy, then well, buckle up, buttercup. It's going to get worse in the coming years. It's going to just get more crazy as we go toward the end times. But it says there in John chapter 16, and he expands on the work of the rock as the parakletos, as the ha'amet, the, 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 the spirit of truth. He says when he comes, he will accuse. Again, the Greek word here has many dimensions to it. The world of accusing, uh, of convicting, of prosecuting that the world is wrong. Wrong about sin, that people don't put their trust in me. Wrong about righteousness, sadik, and that I'm going to the Father. You'll no longer see me anymore. And about judgment of Mishpat, that the ruler of this world has been judged. And we see in this here that Yeshua reveals the Ruach as both uh, accuser and advocator, as in a court of law. There's a court scene going on here, and it's the world that's on trial. It's very common in the scriptures to set things up as a courtroom. The accuser. It's like the prosecutor laying out the charges of what the world's done wrong. They have broken God's ways of living rightly. And then at the same time, there's also the advocate, our defender, that brings us to the Yeshua for forgiveness, for restoration, and for transformation. Note that the Ruach never accuses for the purpose of condemning us. That's what the devil does. But he brings us to the point of conviction for repentance and restoration as the advocate, the defense attorney in the court of law. It's like a great parent who will tell their children what they've done Done wrong but then at the same time how to do things correctly in the same way God in his Torah in his words serves as both accuser and advocator as prosecutor and defender as Rav Shaul says there in Romans chapter 7 verse 7 am I suggesting Torah is sinful absolutely not of course not but Torah 
taught me what is sin. I wouldn't have known coveting, except Torah says, never covet. So God words, God's word accuses by showing us our wrong way, but then advocates for us by showing us the right way of atonement, forgiveness and salvation in Tanakh by the sacrificial system of the tabernacle and then later the temple, but in the new covenant that by the blood of Yeshua. The covenant lawsuit is a typical Israelite uh, uh, prophetic style. Moses and the prophets frequently accused those from turning from God's ways, but then at the same time stood as their advocates, pointing the way to, back to God through sacrifice and living God's holy ways. An interesting story that Craig Keener puts in his commentary on John, for those of you interested in page 959, he's talking here on this direct passage of John 16, and he records a story out of the Apocrypha of uh, Third Enoch in, in chapter 26, where the story has that each day Satan, the accuser, writes uh, a big list of sins that Israel's done, along with the prince of Rome and the prince of Persia, and they put it all in writing, and then they hand this list of sins each day to the seraphim angels for them to present to God so that God would judge and then destroy Israel. But the seraphim, the, the burning ones, burn these accusations in the burning fire that stands before God's throne, probably referring to the bronze altar of both judgment, of sacrifice, but at the same time the altar of forgiveness. Why did they burn the list? It says there because the seraphims knew that God does not want to Israel to be destroyed, but God wants Israel to repent. So God provides that sacrifices for us to have our sins forgiven. So when it comes the time that God is sitting on his throne to judge the world in truth, no charge is presented against Israel. They're all burnt in the sacrifice altar. In the same way, we find Yeshua is our advocate as love in action. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, in the New Covenant, it says there that Yeshua took away that written record of charges against us. And because of its regulations, it stood as a testimony against us. But he took it away by nailing it to the cross. He has paid for all the wrong that we have done if we choose to accept it. So we ask, what will the Ruach HaKomet, the, the spirit of truth, do as both accuser and advocate? Well, Yeshua even lays it out here. First of all, he will reveal to the world about their sin. He will accuse. He will convict that the world is wrong about sin, about sin because people do not believe in me, Yeshua said. We've got to remember that humans do not have the luxury of deciding what is wrong and what is right, what is sin and what isn't sin. Culture does not have this luxury, nor do individuals. We cannot live our life our own way, no matter what Frank Sinatra is saying. The person uh, said to me one time that the Bible is out of date because it doesn't agree with modern culture. And I replied back, no, culture is out of line because it doesn't agree with God, doesn't agree with the Bible. And that's always been the case through history. The Creator alone is the only one who can decide and declare what is holy, what is right, and what is wrong. And the Creator has laid this out very clearly for us in His Word. And he even wrote it on stone for those that are hard of heart. The Greek word for sin, amartia, means the breaking of God's ways, of God's instructions in thought or in action toward both God and toward others. <clears throat> the Ruach will convict the world of their breaking of God's ways of living and doing the wrong ways. The Ruach is our accuser stands and turns in the table against God's accusers and shows that the ones who are accusing God and accusing God's way, saying God is wrong, they are the ones with wrong. They are the one with sin. As it says there, the world's sin is that they don't believe in me. The world's sin is their rejection of Yeshua, who is God's advocator. John 16 uh, says there that when the spirit of a met, the spirit of truth, the Ruach met. When he comes, he will guide us into all truth. Realize he's speaking this to believers. 
And the Ruach is, keeps telling believers where we need to adjust our lifestyle to get away from our pet sins, the ones we do but we excuse away all the time, and get away from those and get back to the righteous way of living by God's standards. As it says there in Ezekiel 36 verse 27, he declares, I will put my Ruach within you. And Yeshua uh, uh, prophesied that, and we saw that fulfilled in the book of Acts. I'll put my Ruach inside you and will cause you to live, enable you, empower you to live by my laws and respect my rulings and obey them, do them, live them out. So when we agree with the Ruach's conviction as accuser, we can then encounter the Ruach as advocator, as the empower to live God's righteous, holy ways. The question is, are we listening to the Ruach's voice and continually adjusting our lives to God's ways and empowering uh, uh, us into our way of living rightly? The Ruach is also the Amet, the spirit of truth about righteousness. It says there in verse 10, when he comes, he will accuse, he will convict that the world is wrong about righteousness, that of Sadiq. And of, I'm going to the Father, and you'll no longer see me. Yeshua's going back to sit at the right hand of the Father. So the Ruach will continue Yeshua's work. The Ruach will accuse and, and convict the world about true righteousness, the right way of living a holy life before God. The world is living wrongly, not rightly. But the trouble is the world doesn't know that. And it needs the Ruach to point that out to them. The world believes that they're living rightly and they're trying to correct social injustices and corruptions and past wrongs and other things within society. And it's a good thing to do, but they are not aligning society in their lives to God's ways, God's standards on holiness and righteousness. That area has been rejected by modern culture so often. But the Ruach will accuse the world and we need to be open to hear him speaking to us. I had the Ruach accuse me before I was a believer, pointing out the wrong that I was doing in my life. Other people tried to point it out. I wouldn't listen. But then he led me to Yeshua to be my advocate, to forgive and transform me, turn my life. God's way of righteousness and holiness that's so often against what the culture declares. That's why we need to be immersed, mikvahed, into the Ruach HaKodesh, as Yeshua promised in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, and Acts chapter 1, verse 8, as described in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, and other places, to empower us from the inside to live outward into God's ways. The Ruach, as the Ruach are met about judgment, the ruler of this world is judged. It says when he comes, he will accuse, he will convict, he will prosecute that the world is wrong about judgment, that area of mishpat, so that in that that the ruler of this world has been judged. Yeshua knows that he'll stu soon be standing between, before a human court that has already prejudged him on false charges and will kill him by crucifixion. Yeshua's hated without a cause, as he says in John chapter 15, in his third explanation of the Ruach's coming. In the same way, the world continues to condemn followers of Yeshua through to this day. If you are a believer in Yeshua, if you're one who follows God, realize that you are accused by the world as being the problem. This is seen by many as being Yeshua's lawsuit against the world. You seek to judge me, but I am the judge of you, Yeshua's declaring. The Ruach HaMet accuses the world that the world is wrong, and it's about its judgment of Yeshua and about the follow of Yeshua's followers, and it reveals the true verdict of the heavenly court that the ruler of this world, Satan, is judged. Earthly courts can decide whatever they want, but it's the heavenly court that has the final decision on all matters of living and life and this world. The evil one who's judged and led all people to judge and reject Yeshua is himself judged and is rejected by the heavenly court. Revelation shows the evil one being thrown out of heaven and he'll end up in the lake of fire forever. 
And those who align themselves with Satan will join him there. So we need to listen to these words of life. Listen to the words of the Ruach. The Ruach continues the ministry in the presence of Yeshua and enables believers to stand against accusations. The world is on trial here, not Yeshua, not his followers. So hold on in spite of the world's accusation. As it says there, the last part of this passage, I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear to hear them right now. However, when the Ruach HaMet, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will say only that which he hears, and he will announce to you the events of the future. He will glorify me, because he will receive from what is mine and announce it to you. Everything the Father has is mine, and that is why I said he receives what is mine and will announce it to you. The Ruach, we have to remember, is not a force, not an it not a substance, but a person, the third person of the triunity of Elohim. The Ruach is identified also as being the Ruach HaAmet, the spirit of truth, because he is God, and therefore he knows God's truth. The spirit will follow God's ways and not do his own thing. He will glorify Yeshua as our advocate, as our way of atonement, as our way of salvation. The Ruach will empower us that we would live holy and rightly before God because he is in us and he is able to give us a hope and a future from the inside, that hug on the inside, bringing us through to life around us. The Ruach within, empowering us, enabling us <clears throat> that we might have the ability of being able to pray in the Ruach, pray in the Spirit. We don't quite know how to pray. And that's where the Ruach from within knows what we're trying to say, puts our jumbled words together and is able to give us the God answer. We're engaging in God's divine inner Trinitarian conversation, the Spirit speaking God's words through us and back again and able to be received as we find there in Acts chapter 2. The Ruach has given us this ability to keep us strong and built up on the inside during these crazy times that's happening on the outside. Is it going to get better on the outside? No, it's probably going to get worse. That's why we need the Ruach on the inside and we need the life of Yeshua on the inside that we might walk in the ways of God despite what's happening in our world around us. That's the promise that is given to us. For the past 2,000 years, the Ruach HaHemet, has been unpacking God's truth for us and he continues to do it for us today. The past 2,000 years, the Ruach has been the accuser and also at the same time the advocate and our comforter in times of persecution, in times of tribulation, the times of trial. And we thank Abba that you have sent us, Yeshua, to atone for our sin. We thank you, Abba, that you have sent us the Ruach HaKodesh, you have not left us alone, but you've enabled us to walk into the realm of shalom and a peace within. And we pray that you would give us Shabbat Shalom today and into the coming weeks. We thank you, Abba, for what you've done. And we praise you, B'Shem Yeshua. Amen.